This is Humble Woman Ministries, and today I'm going to talk about the Sword of God, which is the Word of God. And I'm going to start us off in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, which talks about the armor of God. Now, as we are moving into darker and darker times spiritually, and the deception can sometimes seemingly be off the charts, it is very important that we wear our armor of God. Let's read Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 and find out what that is. It says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. That's what the armor is for. God gives it to us as a way to defend against the enemy. Let's continue. It says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Our armor allows us to stand our ground. And after you have done everything to stand, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. That is the first piece of armor that God gives us. It is the belt of truth. Do you know the truth? Do you know Jesus? Do you know the truth of the gospel? Do you? It's important to know what the truth is and then put that belt of truth around your waist with a breastplate of righteousness in place. When you know the truth, and you know who you are in Christ, you begin to act in righteousness. So wear that as a breastplate, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, be ready to preach the gospel, be ready to defend the gospel, be ready to use the gospel to defend against the enemy. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith. Have faith in the Lord. Have faith in the armor that he's provided you. Know that everything he's given you is adequate to defeat the enemy and to defend against their evil schemes against you. Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Do you have faith? When those fiery darts start coming at you, can you lift up your faith and reject what the enemy is trying to do? Can you keep him out of your mind and your thoughts and your life? Can you do that? You need the shield of faith. It says, take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation, remember, we are saved. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Put on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is our only weapon that is provided to us. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now I'm going to go over to Hebrews 4.12, and here again we see the Word of God being compared to a sword, which is our weapon that God gives us, and today I'm going to wield the sword of God that's been given to me by God Almighty. It says, Hebrews 4.12, for the Word of God is alive and active. It's not a dead word. It's alive and it's working now as it comes out of my mouth, as it's circulating in the world by God's people when they speak out the Word of God. It is sharp and it penetrates even to dividing the spirit, joints, and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. And as we wield the sword of God, I'm going to take us into Isaiah 55, 10 through 12. And it says, So is my word that goes out from my mouth. The word of God, the double-edged sword, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. And dear Lord, I pray today as I speak these words, the words of God, that Isaiah's words will be true. That I'm going to speak these words, they will not return to me empty. And they will accomplish what you desire through me and achieve the purpose for which you have sent it, dear God. I ask you to strengthen me as I wield the word of God, the double-edged sword. Ezekiel 21, 28 says, And you, son of man, prophesy and say, This is what the sovereign Lord says about the Ammonites and their insults. 
They're insults. Have you been insulted lately? Have you been attacked by the enemy? Are they trying to besmirch your character? Are they trying to ruin your reputation? Are they trying to plant a seed of doubt in your life? This is what God has to say to them, and they had better take heed if they have any fear of the Lord in them. It says, A sword, a sword drawn for the slaughter, polished to consume and to flash like lightning. Despite false visions concerning you and lying divinations about you, it will be laid on the necks of the wicked who are to be slain, whose day has come, whose time of punishment has reached its climax. The Lord is long-suffering, but there is a point when your cup of wrath has overfilled and you are overfilling the wrath of God, when you prophesy falsely in His name, when you attempt to twist the word of God into condemning and judging and cutting down your brothers and sisters in Christ. When you use the word of God in a way that it is not intended, it's going to come back to you. Have you had false visions concerning you? Have you had lying divinations about you? Have you been accused and maligned and attacked? If you have and you are a child of God and you are standing firmly in God's foundation and you are wearing your full armor of God and you have your sword that God gives you, your weapon of the word of the Lord, and if you use it appropriately, you will be victorious. And as you use the righteous word of God correctly against your enemies, their cup of wrath begins to overfill. And the cup of wrath, when it is full, will tip over. And their punishment, the people that speak against you, the people that insult you, the people that falsely prophesy of you, the people that use lying divinations to manipulate you, those people's time is coming. It is written. And now I'm going to finish in Ezekiel 13. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts, Hear ye the word of God. Here's the word of God, false prophets. Are you listening? Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have ye not seen a vain vision, and have ye not spoken a lying divination, whereas ye say, The Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God. I am against you. The Lord is against you, all you false prophets, all you lying diviners, all you false seers, all you accusers of the brethren, all you children of the enemy. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. You false prophets, you're not one of us, you're not in the assembly of God's people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Do you have fear of the Lord? Do you have fear of the Lord? His wrath is storing up for you. Repent! It goes on to say, because even because they have seduced my people, saying, Peace, and there was no peace, and one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Say unto them which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstones, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. This is the power of God, wielding nature against his enemies. Lo, when the wall is fallen, shall it not be said unto you, where is the daubing whereth ye have daubed it? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger, and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. 
So I will break down the wall that ye have daubed with untempered mortar, and bring it down to the ground, so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered, and it shall fall, and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus I will accomplish my wrath upon the wall, and upon them that have daubed it with untempered mortar, and will say unto you, The wall is no more, neither they that daubed it. The wall is gone, and neither are those that built the wall, those that daubed it, filled it in with untempered mortar. Untempered mortar is unstable. It is not solid. And these unstable people bringing their false prophecies, deceiving God's people, building a spiritual wall that prevents the children of God from walking in the Holy Spirit into all truth, to wit, the prophets of Israel, which prophesy concerning Jerusalem, and which see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, saith the Lord. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. And say thus, saith the Lord God, Woe to the women that sew pillows to all armholes, and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature, to hunt souls. Sewing pillows and making kerchiefs was a kind of divination. And these people that are the false prophets, the false accusers, are hunters of the souls of God's people. And God is not going to contend with them forever. And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies? Are you lying to God's people for money? Woe unto you. Wherefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms, and I will set the souls go. He's come to set the captives free. You cannot take captive the children of God. Your kerships also will I tear and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. These women used pillows and used witchcraft, and they would capture the souls of God's people, and God is saying, I am going to set them free, and he will, and the Lord's wrath will be upon you, because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity, nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord, I pray that anyone who is under the spell of witchcraft, that it be broken. Anyone who is being tormented by demons, that it be broken. That God remove their pillows, that God rip their kerchiefs, and that their power over you is completely gone. For those of you who are the perpetrators of this evil, repent, repent. God is against you. Fear the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. As always, if you enjoyed this content, please check out more Bible studies in my Bible studies playlist, and be sure to like and subscribe.